day he comes in and he comes over and he goes, good morning, Patricia. <laughs> I said, I'm so sorry. I've never said good morning. I can't remember how to say your name. I was so starstruck and embarrassed. <laughs> I remember a scene where I pretended, Deborah pretended to have breast implants. And the first time we rehearsed it where I actually was wearing the negligee and I was very, very pushed up, he literally couldn't breathe or swallow. I thought he was going to faint. <laughs> and I mean, we had been working together for a while. So it's not like yeah, suddenly Pamela Anderson is showing up on set. It was just me with just a push up bra. But it's, it was, he was so taken aback that he literally could not speak. Brad Garrett is one of the funniest people and never hire him for your school charity fundraiser because he will insult some of the most famous pe parents at your school and you'll have to run around and apologize to them afterwards and beg them not to leave the school. You could drink more champagne than anyone on that set and did so regularly. Peter Boyle was the most wonderful crotchety old guy. And um, I have a habit of just because I, when I hear people say lines as we rehearse over and over, I know the lines, I know everybody's lines. And so when one time when he forgot his line, I said it for him and he turned around to me and yelled, I know my lines. <laughs> and I was like, sorry, but, we, we loved each other so much. And he was really a wonderful, wonderful guy. And that was kind of, you know, why he was so perfect as friend. Neil Flynn knows every jingle from every commercial in the 60s and 70s. We had, even though he grew up in Chicago and I grew up in Cleveland, we had the exact same childhood. And thank goodness he was on the set because those kids were so young. They, had, they didn't understand any of our references. He also does wonderful improv. He's a master at doing improvisation. And he does an incredible Gary Busey. Sarah Drew, I did a movie with her called Mom's Night Out. And I remember that when I came onto the set, she had already been working for two weeks. And he showed me a scene that she had shot with Sean Astin. And it was so good that I felt like I wasn't going to be able to be as good as she was in the movie. Like it scared me, she was so good. And I thought, I don't remember how to act now. I just don't know what I'm gonna do. And I told the other actors, I don't, I don't think I can do this. And they said, we're so glad that you feel that way after the shows you've done that you feel like you don't know how to act because we feel that way too. And so I made sure I made Sarah a close friend so that um, I could really stick close to her and learn everything she does because she's really terrific. Ty Burrell and I worked together on a very short-lived show called Back to You. And in it, he plays a reporter and he tases himself as, as being a reporter trying to find out, you know, wanting to have the experience of being tased so he knew what it was like. In Mom's Night Out, I was tased, my character was tased. So I went back and looked at Ty's performance in Back to You, because he did it so well, and I completely stole that from his performance. I used to watch Chevy Chase when I was in uh, high school, when he was on the first host of, one of the first cast members of Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. So flash forward, I'm in this movie with him, and I am so starstruck that when he would come and sit in the makeup chair next to me at the trailer, I didn't know what to say, and I, I couldn't remember if he, his name was Chevy or Chevy. So I never wanted to say good morning to him. So about the fifth day he comes in and he comes over and he goes, good morning, Patricia. And I said, I'm so sorry. I've never said good morning. I can't remember how to say your name. <laughs> I was so starstruck and embarrassed. Kyle McLaughlin. I was scared of him because he was in a movie which I can't unsee. <laughs> I remember just thinking, he must be the creepiest guy on the planet. He's always in these weird movies, right? And then I met him and he is the most gentlemanly. He's like from another era. It's like he should have a monocle and a cravat and be having a cane and spats on his shoes. He's just like the most normal, genteel, lovely person and I was, 
so taken aback by how wonderful he was. And I just thought, I said to him, my gosh, I thought you were going to be the biggest creep. And you're exactly the opposite. And I just adore him. I love working with him.